welcome back to another episode of Total Control with SD Wesker. Uh, word of warning, I am not feeling very well at all at the moment, and uh, it makes it worse with the fact that I decided to try and somehow record double the amount of videos this week to cover uh, the time I'm going to be away. I don't think that's actually end up going to come to pass. Um, basically, I just don't see how that's going to be possible. I just, yeah, <laughs> it's one of the days where I could do that sort of thing. Plus, back then, I wasn't doing anywhere near the level of editing and off-camera stuff that I was doing yeah, it's just one of those things. But more other than that, so I don't know when there's going to be a little gap, but there will probably be one. I'll let you know when the last video of that little period um, has happened, essentially, so you'll know when there's a gap coming. I'll try to somehow avoid it, but I just think that it's just one of those things. I think if I was at full 100%, I could maybe do it, but not right now. I feel like crap. But the show must go on. And I've actually had a chance to see some comments. However, I'm so many videos in front at the moment because of the way that we're doing this at the moment that it's not been ideal. We're still, like, in the in terms of what's gone out, that then the Gallego is an absolute lamppost territory. Um, so we've obviously not seen his sort of transformation into, into a striker that can actually put the ball in the net sometimes. But I thought we'd take a quick look, um, just so we can see the pure damage, because I have actually gone and done a little bit with the set pieces, um, because I knew I was going to have to take some time over it, and I've done some more thinking as well. Like I said in the last video, I often don't notice things until I'm in the recording, uh, sorry, into the editing or the review stage of the videos, because it's so difficult to think coherently about the analytical side of stuff while I'm trying to talk and be entertaining at the same time. But I have got some thoughts. One was glaring, and I'm sure some of you would have been shouting it in the comments over the next couple of videos, but that's life in it. So, um, yeah. We have the second worst defence in the league of 14 goals conceded in eight matches. It's not great, but it's also not like beyond the realms of possibility of being that bad either. Like, it's not like we've conceded 23, 24 goals or something and we're completely cut adrift in terms of the goal side of things. It's just been our lack of scoring that's been the real issue. And the main problem has been the number of these that have come from set piece or dead ball situations, I should say more importantly. And this is what we're going to have a little look at here. So firstly, from corners, you can see we've conceded one. That was against Barcelona in fairness, but still we could have done better. It's a needless goal to concede. The referee kicks, we've conceded one of those as well. So that's two of the 14 goals can be accounted for these. That was the Bruno one. Is this where things really get silly? Five goals from indirect free kicks in eight matches. Um, if that extrapolates out, we'd be conceding 25 odd over the course of a season. It's not good, is it? Um, so that right there, that's seven goals conceded from these situations. And also we had a penalty against Barcelona too. So eight goals of the 14 have come from dead ball situations which is utterly absurd. Uh, more than half the goals that we've conceded have come from those kind of situations. Uh, we've had a couple of long shots go against us as well, which is, yeah, <laughs> we had the, the long shot against Barca, and there was a long shot, I think, against Levante as well. Both excellent goals. And Sergio Roberto scored an absolute banger. There's so few goals that have just come from us being carved apart, which is actually a good sign if we can tighten up the other areas. So that's what I've attempted to do. Now, I've been doing some research about defending free kicks, and there's not a lot of literature written about it. But what I did find was on uh, Kesey Renzi's website talking about this sort of stuff. And I've implemented some of his theories into our defensive and free kick sort of stuff. I've essentially just tried to sort of copy what he did and then try to apply it and change the roles around to fit the players that we've got basically and I've done that for all of them um because I think it just needed to be done to see how we can work like sometimes you've just got to know when to cede the knowledge to someone far more learned than yourself but that doesn't stop us from conceding them and if we can cut down on the number of them we're conceding then I think that will help as well and I can't believe I didn't notice this until this point but opposition instructions I have got tackling harder on virtually every player on the opposition's like forward line. Any player that basically leaves their half, we're trying to hack to pieces. This could work fine if you've got a team with amazingly good tacklers and you're going to keep a lot of the ball anyway, like it did with Stockport, like it did with uh, Polonia, right? We're not in that position because every team in this league is better than us. And that's why it's been difficult to sort out a tactic because we're never going to come up against a team in this league that we're better than, like, on the base level. So everything is an uphill battle. And I think that's why this save has been so difficult, but why, hopefully, will be rewarding when, and I'm saying when, we get this right. So the first thing we're going to do is not do that. Um, if an opportunity presents itself where we can, uh, my, my assistant's like, you know, we probably should tackle this player a bit harder because he's a naughty boy. Then we'll go with it. But there's no way in hell I'm doing it from the default. I reckon this will probably could knock seven or eight fouls off per game, which is going to be a lot less opportunities to concede from free kicks. Now, we might concede a, a, an extra goal or two over the course of a season from not doing this. But as long as we stay relatively solid defensively, I think this could be the difference. And there's a couple more thoughts too that I've had about the shape we're playing. But more on that in a minute. Sorry, I'm, I'm feeling positive about these things, despite feeling like I'm going to pass out. So it's it's a bit of both. If we score, I might well just keel over. Since we're here anyway, I might as well discuss my other thoughts. So the things I pointed out in recent matches that I don't like. 
the fact that our midfielders will get this ball, get the ball in a cluster, and they will continually pass it between the three of them, even though we're on a mixed passing directness, and refuse to play it out wide, even though we're focusing play down these sides. So there's that. And the only way I can think of maybe getting around that would be telling the two other midfielders here to run wide with the ball. When the player has the ball, to just drive into those spaces a little bit more because it will put them slightly closer to those wingers and it might just make the pass more applicable. It's just an idea. We could do that for both of them. Now, we could also up the individual passing directness of the players, but I don't really want them to be, you know, going too di more direct for the most part. Although maybe Torre could get away with being more direct because he is Yaya Torre after all. And this is a guy with 16 passing and 16 vision. Like, he's got the attributes for that kind of thing. And he's a good dribbler who runs with ball often as well. So that could definitely help us. The other thought I had was, since we're so ineffective down this right-hand side, and Huampi's basically... I don't think he's scored a single goal this season. No, he's made 10 appearances and has got no goals. But he does have a couple of assists. And it essentially makes me think that perhaps we should be playing a winger on this side too. So we're just trying to get the ball out wide, get balls into the danger areas, rather than pussyfooting around with inside forwards that seem a bit ineffectual, frankly. I think that would work if we were of a reasonable level at this league, but we're not. And he's just losing the ball way too easily because he's trying to cut inside too often. Whereas if we make him a winger... Now, I don't know if I'd even actually play him here, but that's what I would suggest. So he's going to come deep to get the ball. We know that, unfortunately. He's just a part of his game. Um, nothing we can do about that. But then he wouldn't always play this role. Because if we take Huampi off of this, you'll see that we've got Miramon, who's probably way more adept at this. He's got a very strong right foot with a good left foot as well. Good passing. He's not super quick, but I, I feel like maybe we could try Miramon further up the pitch. There's also the option of Tahith Chong, because he's got a fairly strong right foot as well. So I feel like he'd actually do an all right job of being a winger on this side too. And he's actually a lot quicker as well. And there's even Ferrero. You know, he's here. He's obviously an inside forward as well, but he's very strong on his right foot. So he could actually play on this uh, wing as a winger pretty comfortably, I'd say. So lots of options if we were to switch to this. But anyway, we must press on because we've got Sevilla next away from home. Oh, this is not going to be an easy one. Something else I think. I think Mango needs more foot. It's one of those things where we've got strikers and none of them have really set the world alight. Nilmar has been ineffectual when he's played. I don't think he's actually had a shot yet. Gallego has scored a couple of goals, so there's that, but he's had a fair amount of time on the ball. And Mango is training well, so I feel like he deserves game time. So he may well get some appearances for us. He's going to have to. And whenever you get goalkeeping mistakes on an FM save on YouTube, the comment section is immediately... Get a new goalkeeper. Well, we don't have that option because our other goalkeeper is even worse and trains like a, well, like a fat man. He trains like I would train. Sevilla lost again. Sevilla are having a terrible start to the season, which means we're going to come along and break their combo and give them their first win. Not first win, you know what I mean. I feel like we're going to have to Steve McQueen this shit uh, and find a way out of it. I mean, we're still only eight games in. There's 30 games to go, 90 points available. 90 points out of 90, sorted. Okay, so training, preparing for Sevilla. Now, first thing we're going to do, absolutely set piece defending free kicks set pieces defending corners oh you can drag them nice maybe not on the day before the match eh might just add a chance creation one in there we're going to start phasing out these ones pretty much from the end of this period um we've got a very very tough situation coming up after that as well so because this malaga game really does not come at a good time <laughs> George Mir oh sorry, Jorge Miramol is he's broken his pissing arm, hasn't he? He's only gone and broken his arm. Heavy fall during a training session. What did he do? Was he trying to paint the hat? Oh god, George. Because let's face it, we could get down at the dumps and get all frustrated, but where's the fun in that? We are, after all, playing a match. Uh, a game rather. I also saw that FM20 was announced yesterday, so that's pretty dope. The colour scheme, lovely. So Sevilla lost their last game. Uh, they had a lot of shots, to be fair, and they've conceded a lot of goals, but scored a lot of goals too, in fairness. Holy shit, Juanpi was in the Spanish First Division Team of the Week. As was Juvan... I'm sorry, this is some nonsense right here. We've had no players named in the Team of the Week all season. And this mother gets in the... No. There's this cool little striker here, uh, Ayozi Rubio, who is a, a regent. I don't understand. I guess he just appeared for them. Look at this, 15-15-15. Not tall, but he's pacey as well. That's a really cool looking player. So, Sevilla. They play a very similar system to uh, Levante. And their system actually is very similar to what I played in that one random friendly. I figured this day would come. Camacho's annoyed at me. He'll be fine. We'll give him some Gatorade. It's got electrolytes. It's what plants need. Okay, I've managed to appease him for a little bit longer. I'm just going to keep knocking it down the road. That's future Matt's problem. Holy shit, he's given me 127 days now. Finally, there have been some youth intakes. I just wanted to sort of show this off as to why I like this database setup. It's the first youth intake we've had. This is, uh, I'm guessing... Dinamo Brest Minsk. So this is the Belarusian League. But look, before, 
on my other saves where you'd get maybe one or two players from like Batty Borisov or someone like that. But this is just Belarus. Look at this. Okay, most of these players will be garbage, but look at the amount of options you'll have when like doing youth scouting now. It means you'll actually be able to build a team because the chances are there's going to be some good players eventually come through some of these countries and there's a way better chance of it when they're actually producing regens. And that to me is going to be bloody fantastic for future saves because we're going to have so many unique like obscure nationed players and it's going to be great fun. Obviously we can't do it for this save because we don't have the scouts for it but for next saves, brilliant stuff. As for rebuilding whatever, I, I really like the idea of doing Notts County but there's Berry and Bolton and Berry today were just expelled from the Football League so I don't know how we'd even do that save because they'd have to form a Phoenix club or something. I don't really know what's going to go on with that. So I would like to do something like that with maybe Berry or a Bolton but depending on what happens, I'm not sure or Notts County because they've got Regan Booty. We need Athletic Bilbao to do us a favour here against Valladolid. And they have done. That's that's good to see. Lots of goals being conceded by other teams around us. Even Juan Hernandez is actually putting in some shifts. Gabardino Mango is slipping off a little bit. But he does have that moves into channels tray as well, which is an interesting one. Gallego, though, he's really training well. Now, we're obviously not going to go on attacking for today's game. Uh, not for today's game. We're just going to set it up now so we're training it during the week. Oh, do you reckon I should pile on the pressure on Sevilla's manager? Maybe it is time to start the mind games. Assertive. Let's go and stick the boot in on uh, Pablo Machin here. Yep. I'm sticking the boot in. I'm going to go all out here. <laughs> I've decided to be an absolute wanker in the press. Why not? My players might start to like me. Okay, so we're going to have to talk to Galan. And finally, okay. It's weird that this has started happening now. I actually forgot we'd got the higher defensive line. We'll just go with a standard one without getting stuck in. Keep the press to a, a, a reasonable level. I just want to concede less free kicks. Weirdly, we've not been the most fouly team in the league this year, which is actually quite surprising. And also, weirdly, 84% tackles one ratio. That's actually really high compared to the rest of the league. Okay, Girona are up there too. But it does make me feel like we might actually have something here. Okay, so we've got the 12 o'clock kickoff. Obviously, oh no, we are at home. Why did I think we were away from home? I think it's after that we've got a run of away games. For a sort of winger on this right-hand side, look at that. He's got all right crossing. He's dribbling, first touch, good pass with the ball. He's fast, he's tall. I think this might be the time to give him a, give him a tryout, to be honest. I'm tempted to bring Galan back in as well. And maybe since we're at home, try Jose Angel there. I do also appreciate that our constant tactical changes as well are not helping, but we need to find something. So remember, the changes we've made this time, we've got a winger here. We've also got uh, both of these two to run wider with the ball because I feel like they're just, we're not moving around with it enough in this area. If they could just get a little bit wider to get some of these spaces in because we're going to have to because there's nothing here. Okay, so we know kind of what they're going to do. Uh, they've got Ben Yedder, who's a deep line forward, interestingly. And they've got Benega is probably their main, main man. They're a cautious sort of team, balanced and flexible, it would seem. Uh, they only press when the opportunity arises. So that's interesting. So they're actually going to sit. We might have a chance to get a bit of possession here. So analyst report. They lost to Catafe playing this exact system. And they had Alex Vidal playing right back. So they mostly go down this left-hand side with Escudero. But were looking pretty awful. Kept the ball a lot in this clustered area. And also really deep in the right-back spot with um, Gomez, interestingly. In fact, so not the right-back spot. It was one of their centre-backs. But what we're going to do for a start is turn off all of these here because i don't think tackling harder is going to make it any easier for us if anything it's just going to give away more free kicks so that is now done i do however want to show those guys under their weaker foot press their fullbacks Benega's the guy to go after vasquez i guess could probably be pressed but i don't want to tight mark it perhaps actually we'll tight mark vasquez and not sarabia because sarabia is slightly deeper it would seem hopefully we'll be a bit stronger from defending free kicks and corners but we've trained them in training we've adjusted the actual settings themselves i can only hope and if we still can see from free kicks today, then I honestly don't know anymore. Right, let's go. Um, obviously testing out a few little differences today with wingers on both sides, as well as our centre midfielders uh, making wider runs. So we'll see how this works out for us today, shall we? I just want to see us not commit as many fouls. Like, if we can keep it to under 10 today. Oh my god, Vasquez running straight at the defence. And where was the uh, defensive midfielder? It'll almost certainly come down, but it is pleasing to see us keep so much of the possession. Gallego, round the side for Torre. Nice work. Oh, that's so, so, so poor. Navas now. Over the top for Ben Yedder. Oh, my God. Well, there we go. We've actually conceded a goal that wasn't directly from a free kick or something. Again. Uh, Torrey just delivered. They should have maybe closed down Navas a bit faster. I don't know. It's a great ball over the top, but I don't know what the defender's doing. He waits so long before turning and running after that. And now we trail at home to Sevilla. It's not been the most positive start, but that is just... Oh, my Lord. Ball's in good positions, I suppose. Possession is still good. Vasquez? Oh, dear. Musto. And Sua loses out. We are definitely playing a deeper line, right? Oh my god, he's still gone through again. How are we suddenly conceding balls over the top now? I'm going to drop the line slightly 
deeper because that's clearly their plan today is knocking balls over the top for Ben Yedda to chase and they've got in there twice from it now. Uh, we can't afford to let that keep happening. So we're going to make the conscious decision to drop deeper today. But I think that might just be down to the way that um, Sevilla are playing rather than a weakness in our tactic as such. Gallego, got to get the ball out wide. He's found Galan. That's really, really deep as well. Ball across. Gallego! We've hit the crossbar. The sitting deeper part is definitely going to cause some issues at times though. Vasquez, Roque Mesa. But it's mostly causing them to shoot like that. Chong is not covering and doing anything from a defensive standpoint here. Rog. Oh. Oh my lord. <laughs> well, if it isn't one thing, it's another, isn't it, really? We stop them from... We, we stop conceding free kicks, so they'll just score from range instead. Uh, it's a great goal from Marco Rog. Ball rolled into the middle. Ton, he's miles away, and he's just ricochet... Rattled that one into the top corner. Ay. And that's because we're sitting deeper, but... Maybe we shouldn't hit early crosses because we've got more of the ball and maybe we should wait for a better opportunity to appear. We've just got to keep going, but we're 2-0 we're down now. And oh my God, what are you doing? I think maybe asking Toure to play long balls. I think, yeah, we're limiting some of our midfield play. I don't think we need him to do both the run wide and play the long balls. We pushed the line back up a little bit too, so we're not quite sitting as deep um, because I feel like they were just, we were allowing them onto us too much for those long shots. Back to Oh my God. They can't even control a football from two yards away. Right, I actually don't think we need to stay getting stuck in because we're actually getting a lot of the ball as it is. Gallego, he has been better, but no. I'm going to try triple sub here. Just try and shake this up a little bit. Jose Angel's ball in. Yo, yo, Torre, and it's saved by the goalkeeper. Ball in. Oh, wow. Oh, what a save from Jovanovic. Honestly, it could have been more. We've been shit. Juanpi. Oh, Malero puts it in on the rebound. Gonzalo Malero makes it 2-1 here. Uh, maybe there is still hope. Yeah, but that was just pure fortune. Look, we've actually now gone and scored a free kick. Juanpi's initial strike uh, hits the sort of Literally hits the cross, and Malero's there on the rebound to put it in for his second of the season. Wait, he's definitely scored a goal this season. He scored one against uh, Oviedo. Oh, no, it wasn't Malero, was it? That was Rivera that scored the goal against Oviedo. Roque Mesa, ball in. Okay, we defended it reasonably well. He wasn't able to get a dangerous situation from that. I'm going to go very attacking for the final 10 minutes here. Let's try and fire ourselves into an unlikely result. Quampy! Oh, yes! What a bloody strike from Juanpi. Comes off the bench with 10 minutes to go, and we are level at home to Sevilla. It is 2-2. Come on! That is very much against the run of the play, but the second half, though, we've been much, much better. What about this for a strike from Juanpi? Picks it up, keepers miles out of his goal, in fairness. And it's 2-2 here, right? We're going to turn it off a very attacking note. But I feel like we've been the better side in the second half and there might well be more to come from us in the final 10 minutes. This is insane. Malero and Huampi have come and got us goals that have leveled the game up at 2 all against Sevilla. Let's go out there and grab ourselves a third. Come on. If we grab a third goal here and win this match, this could be the turning point in our season. Like, I know they're, they're struggling Sevilla, but they are still Sevilla with Sevilla's players. And one of the problems I find on FM is when you come up against a really good team that are doing poorly, they still often play like the good team that they are. Um, that's how often it seems to go when you come up against these sort of opponents. So I'm taking this as a good result if we were to get a point here. Ball across. Escudero. Juanpi. It's going to come back again. Malero. Juanpi. Could go inside and have a shot, maybe. Goes out wide for Jose Angel. If we score a winner here, I might run around the room. Cleared away. Juanpi. The pressure is mounting. This is mental. Uh, Escudero. Roque Mesa. They're going to try and play that wide. Get out to Jesus Navas. Escudero. Nah. I've had enough. And I know it's because we're on attacking and we're going for it, but it is getting stupid now. He's so wide. He's so wide. How are these going in? We've been so good. I don't believe it. We're going to lose it again. And so, like, we haven't conceded from a free kick in today's game, but we have conceded three goals, all from open play. You cannot win. You, 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 do, you block the one thing that they're scoring all the goals from, and then, oh, what's that? Another thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, I, I don't believe it again. We came back, we fought valiantly to get back into that match, and then they still threw it away in the 94th fucking minute. I don't know, we should have sat back, but we can't afford to do that when everything is going our way and they had nothing in that second half. Well, here we are. Hello, old friend. Hello, you've just lost the league game by a late goal. At least we stopped conceding from free kicks, I suppose, for this one game. And then just, yeah... Right, well, there you go. So, next game, next episode, it's going to be Malaga, which will probably win because it's the cup, and then Atletico, which admittedly we don't expect to win. But after that is where these two games are both must win. We have to win both of these. There is no other option, really.
yeah <laughs> if you enjoyed the episode give it a like that'll be cool i suppose and if you're new to the channel subscribe that'll be cool also and i'll join you guys in the next episode for a double header of games against malaga and atletico madrid it's gonna be 10 consecutive defeats we know that but there you go i'll see you guys soon thanks so much for watching bye bye